Today we celebrate the Feast of St. Andrew, one of the apostles, and in fact some would say that he was one of the first apostles. So it was Andrew who went and told Peter, and eventually, as we see in today's Gospel reading, we have the call of, uh, of the brothers Andrew and Peter. Um, they were fishermen and they leave their nets immediate. It's not the first time that our Lord encountered them or they encountered our Lord, but nevertheless, this is their calling. This is their response. It's a reminder to us to respond generously to God. And notice how it mentions that immediately they left their nets and followed him. So when we feel the call of God, we shouldn't hesitate. Yes, we need to discern, is it correct or is it not correct? But once we are sure, that God is calling us, we need to follow him. And this call is especially in regards to conversion. St. Philip Neri has a saying that when someone is called from a bad state to a good state, there shouldn't be any delay in, in going from that bad state to the good state. So for example, let's say someone is called to convert to Christianity, to Catholicism. But going from a good state to a better state, such as a call to the religious life or the priesthood, then one needs to take time, counsel, and prayer. So in other words, one has to discern, one has to be more cautious in that regard. And this call, of course, um, the call to conversion, the call to follow Christ, the call to be a disciple of Christ, is one that applies to all of us. And it's especially the apostles who were charged with this task. The word apostle means one who is sent. So they were sent out into the world to proclaim the message of salvation to everyone. And I love today's first reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. You know, he points out that, how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? And the reality is that each one of us are sent. And in fact, at the end of mass, uh, at the end of mass rather, traditionally the, it was ite missa est, thus you are sent. So at the end of Mass, we are all sent out. Go and proclaim the gospel of the Lord. So we come to Mass. We are nourished by the Eucharist. We are nourished by the Word of God. We are nourished by uh, listening to the priest. We are nourished by the prayers of the Mass. We are nourished by the example of everyone around us and inspired and strengthened in our faith. We go out carrying Jesus within our hearts, within our souls, to share his love, to share his goodness. But the point St. Paul makes is very important. If people don't hear the word of God, they're not going to believe. And if it's not you and I who's going to proclaim the word of God to them, maybe no one else will. So we have a tremendous opportunity to do good, to merit tremendously for ourselves, but hopefully to save souls. Here's an interesting fact about St. Andrew that most people probably don't know. St. Andrew went and was responsible for the conversion of the area around Russia. So in Russia, St. Andrew is the patron saint of Russia. And I think this is noteworthy because as we know, there's a war going on between Russia and Ukraine, and also the messages of Our Lady of Fatima that Russia will be converted. And Russia is primarily Orthodox. So some people say that this conversion entails the Orthodox joining or becoming united with the Catholic Church. So let us ask St. Andrew that there be peace between Russia and Ukraine. You know, at one point they were kind of part of the same nation. But, but let us also pray that St. Andrew intercede on behalf of the Russian people. You know, they're not the ones responsible for this war. So many people blame Russians, which is wrong. But let us pray for, for St. Andrew to, to um, strengthen the Russian people in their faith 
and hopefully to get them to unite with the Catholic Church. Just a reminder, we will have a funeral tomorrow on Thursday at 11 a.m. for Colin Vaz. Visitation is this evening from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Ogden Funeral Home. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Also a reminder that first Friday is this Friday. We will have the all-night vigil of adoration.